Honourable Members of the European Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, 20 years ago, European associations representing retail, wholesale and international trade merged into Eurocommerce. The founders of our new association, retail legends like Lord Sainsbury and Albert Hein, were interested in Brussels because they wanted a single voice for commerce at European level. They saw a business opportunity. And that opportunity was the establishment of the European single market in 1992. Our founders knew there'd be huge battles against vested interests. We fought at the side of the European Commission. We fought and finally we won. And at Eurocommerce, we always say that we are the greatest fan of the single market. And that's not because we have fallen in love with the beautiful blue eyes of single market commissioner Mar Michel Barnier, <laughs> but because the economic potential of a true European market with more than 500 million consumers is irresistible for retailers and wholesalers. Now, in less than six months' time, citizens throughout the European Union will vote in the elections for the European Parliament. Unfortunately, turnout at the ballot box has been low in recent European elections. Therefore, to make it more attractive to go out to vote, Belgium, for example, is offering a package deal whereby European elections, national elections, and elections for the regions are all to be held on the same day. They speak about the mother of all elections. And in retail, we know this phenomena all too well. Retailers are experiencing the mother of all elections on a daily basis, or to be more precise, the mother that elects on a daily basis as millions of families choose where to shop simply by voting with their feet. Not once every five years, but every single day. The word footfall encapsulates this process. A high footfall means a steep sales volume, seducing as many people as possible to vote consistently for your shop by walking in and buying products. That is the art of retailing. One often reads that the pace of change is accelerating. However, the secrets to successful retail remain timeless. Let me illustrate this by giving you some examples. Pile em high and sell em cheap. This slogan was first invented by Tesco founder Jack Cohen more than 50 years ago. Compare this with more recent slogans. Low in price, but high in trust. That's Carrefour. So much for your money. Delays. And affordable solutions for better living. That's Ikea. And all these slogans prove that offering good value for money to customers has stood the test of time. Value for money is not, of course, just about price. Service and convenience, quality, safety, and reliable delivery all matter too. And on top of that, there is a wider social and economic contribution. So let me turn to Eurocommerce. We're a broad church. We represent more than 30 national associations and we cover small, medium, uh, and large companies. We represent five and a half million enterprises, both food and non-food, and we employ 29 million people. Among our members are many wholesalers. They do not normally interact with consumers, but they play a fundamental role in helping to make supply chains efficient, both within the EU and across the world. And they link producers with retailers and artisans and restaurateurs and other professions. Now, Eurocommerce speaks for all of the commerce sector. And although there are sometimes differences in what our members would like us to do, we are all aware that we are strongest in Brussels if we speak with one voice. The virtues of perseverance and patience are central to surviving in Brussels. Retailers and wholesalers are essentially traders. Buying goods today, selling them tomorrow is the name of the game. Retail and wholesale are fast, while governments, forgive me, Mr. President, are often more considered 
and slow moving. Yet EU legislation and standards affect companies even when they are at the proposal stage, for example, via their effect on share prices. And this is why our members continue to support Eurocommerce every year. They know that if the retail and wholesale sector is not engaging, they will have no influence on European rules. They will have to abide by the rules anyway, be it consumer, data protection, environment, or anti-dumping. That's the bottom line. But there is more to do. Eurocommerce also assists its members by preventing undesirable legislation and by pushing forward voluntary initiatives. Very important examples are the Retail Environment Action Programme and the Supply Chain Initiative. The latter concerns a huge effort by the European food and drink manufacturing industry and the retail industry launched in September. And I would say this must now be fully implemented on the ground in every member state. But I would like to use the occasion to express our very warm thanks to our guests from across all the industries involved for their collaboration in this endeavor. Thank you. Eurocommerce also, yeah, good idea. Eurocommerce also helps its members to open up markets. We were a firm advocate of the Eastern European enlargement round of the European Union in 2004. And the addition of these countries has allowed our members to build vibrant retail markets all the way from Poland to the Black Sea. And at Eurocommerce, we're happy to fight on behalf of our members. For more than 10 years, we've campaigned, including in the courts, to change the rules that govern card payment charges. So I'm especially delighted that the European Commission has launched a legislative proposal to reform these charges and to put the relationship between retailers and banks on a fairer footing. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we're going through challenging times. Since the Treaty of Rome laid the foundations of the modern European Union more than 50 years ago, there has long been an expectation that the next generation will be better off than their parents. Instead, youth unemployment has reached staggering levels. We run the risk of a lost generation. I believe that the retail sector, the largest employer of young people in Europe, has a prominent role to play in reigniting growth and prosperity for the next generation. Against this backdrop, we are today launching our manifesto for the forthcoming elections, Shopping for Growth, with our key demands designed to help retail and wholesale fuel growth and create yet more jobs. Our main themes for the next parliament and the next commission are, first, encouraging growth through innovation and improving life for consumers by making maximum use of the digital and mobile revolution. Second, making markets more open and improving European competitiveness so that we are not left behind by Asia and other improving nations. Third, further nurturing sustainable enterprises in which we are already a key player in training schemes, green initiatives, and so on. But also, as I have indicated, we must support fair supplier relations through joint voluntary endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, our sector is going through rapid transformation. Competition is fierce as customers manage tight household budgets and use the internet to find best value. With the right policy environment, the resulting efficiency gains and new ways of doing business can provide a magnificent launch pad for growth. I've spoken about where Eurocommerce stands at the laudable age of 20. As I'm sure everyone in this room can agree, this is an excellent age to aspire to. <laughs> the vigor of youth remains, complemented by experience and our past achievements. Our aspirations are greater than ever, and we are confident that with your support, the best is yet to come.
Thank you. It is now my great honor to introduce our key speaker, the President of the European Council, Mr. Herman von Rompuy. He's the first permanent president of the European Council. He took office in January 2009 and immediately had to contend with the Euro crisis. He helped to restore financial stability and to save the single currency, which we had, of course, helped to establish with Eurocommerce members expertly leading the changeover from national currencies to the Euro in 2002. In the spring of 2012, Mr. Van Rompuy was reappointed for a second term. And during his second term, he is successfully moving forward with a banking union, which will be another major milestone. He is a true statesman who has received, on behalf of the European Union, the Nobel Prize for Peace after a successful spell as Belgian Prime Minister. Mr. Van Rompuy taught economics and philosophy and has published seven books and two bundles of Japanese-style poems. So he's an extraordinary man of talent and culture. Mr. Van Rompuy, you are a strong defender of our European life and of the need to improve our competitiveness. And Eurocommerce is particularly pleased that as president, you've stressed the need to develop the European single market and to accommodate the digital revolution. Mr. President, we are all so much looking forward to hearing from you. The floor is yours.